Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to talk about interface VPC endpoints. So starting off, uh, basically interface endpoints came into being because gateway endpoints had a lot of problems. The first problem, they were free. So if you go and see the gateway endpoints are free, so you don't have to pay anything for the gateway endpoints. So that is that was one of the major reasons to get rid of them. So what AWS did is with the advent of network load balancers in somewhere around 2017 or early 2018, uh, they got rid of uh, gateway endpoints and they introduced uh, interface endpoints for all their services. So interface endpoints are nothing. They are very similar to gateway endpoints. They use AWS private link technology private link and they give you access to various services but one of the major benefit of using interface endpoints is that now you can't just connect only to the AWS services but you can connect to services which are provided by say AWS partners sorry for this overwriting or you can connect to your services running in say some other VPC. So you can expose services running in this VPC using a network load balancer. And then you can consume that service in some other VPC using an endpoint, basically an interface endpoint. So we'll see how you do this, right? So this is what interface endpoint is and why they came into being. So this was all about theory. Let's just go into our AWS console and see how we can basically use interface endpoints. So guys, welcome back to the video. And now you can see I'm in my AWS console and you can see a bunch of instances running. So first I'll show you how to use interface endpoint in your VPC and then in the next video we're going to see what are endpoint services and how I can create a service in my one VPC and consume it, it, consume it in another VPC. Right? So I'll go to my, so I think these are the instances which are running in my So I'll go to my VPC just to catch my VPC ID, to grab my VPC ID. Get rid of this. So you can see I have I've created another VPC called service VPC. So we'll be using this service VPC in the next video when we are going to create a service in this VPC and consume it in our AWS SA exam VPC. But for this video, I'll just be using this VPC. So let me grab the VPC ID. And go to EC2 and see what instances have we running in this VPC. So quickly grab it. So you can see we have two instances running. One will act as a bastion host or a jump box and the other which we are going to use. So let me quickly log into my the jump host instance let me go to my and i'll do key forwarding as well so that i'm able to log into my private instance So I'm in my public instance and I'm really sorry for this background noise. Someone is just drilling the hell out of the wall. Okay, so let me grab the IP of my private instance and log into it. And SSH. So I'm in. And for this video probably what I'll do is 
have I assigned any role? So you can see I have assigned one role to this uh, instance, which is SQS full access. So if I do AWS SQS list queues. Okay, I need to give it the region as well. US East 1. So this won't be able to go out for the obvious reason because I don't have any NAT uh, gateway or instance for which to allow the traffic to go out. Uh, and I hate this guy who's just using his hammer. Jokes apart. So you can see this instance is not able to go out. Okay. So now let's use a VPC endpoint to go out to our SQS. I'll just exit out of here, go back to my AWS console, go to VPC, select my AWS exam VPC, go to endpoints, and I'll create an endpoint. It will be an AWS service. So if you are using, uh, it's just uh, basically a caveat. So if, when you are creating endpoint for AWS services, uh, basically an interface endpoint, you need to accept the service provider need to accept your request. So since the service provider is AWS itself, uh, the your request gets uh, accepted automatically. But if it's a third party service provider, say uh, an Amazon partner or your own VPC you are accepting. So you need to go and manually accept that request. So if I select SQS, see, so you can see there's an endpoint uh, URL. So I'll select this service name, select my VPC, which is my AWS exam. And since this is all private, I'll put this in private subnet. So private subnet two and private subnet one. For security group, I'll leave it as default. So I'll, I'm not sure what's there in default, but we need HTTPS access. So I'll just check what's there in default or rather I'll do what I have on my instance, which is I think launch wizard 12. Policy, like uh, in my gateway endpoint, I'm using the default policy. I'm not selecting any custom policy. And I'll just do a create endpoint. And I need to wait a couple of minutes before this endpoint comes up. So you can see my endpoint is available. So unless it's in available state, you cannot use it. So, and another thing you can see that it created two ENIs. So this is what interface endpoint does. It creates basically elastic networking interface in your, the subnets, which I basically assigned it during creation. So it created two ENIs in those two subnets. You can check the details here as well. So you can see the subnet, the IP address, which it gave security group. So another reason to get rid of gateway endpoint was this, that over the interface endpoint, you have a lot of control. You have a lot of control over the security. You can secure them using security group, network ACLs, uh, policies was there in gateway endpoint as well. So not that an issue. And so this is probably created. Now let's just go back to our EC2 instance and clear the screen. I'll run the same command, but in this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it another parameter called endpoint URL, and it will be an HTTPS URL. And the URL I'm going to get from the details. So I'm going to copy one of these DNS names so AWS has created these many because of uh, fault tolerance and high availability reasons. So you can copy any. And I'm going to tell that if you want to go to SQS to list the queues in US East, go via this endpoint. So this is what I'm doing. Press enter. 
and now you can see that my private instance is able to go to SQS and fetch a queue which I created called my test queue. So this is how interface endpoint work. So I think I'll keep only to this point in this video and in the next video I'm going to show you how you can create endpoint services to consume some service which is running. Okay, so I hope this was useful to you and probably let's just continue with the course. Thank you for watching.